Joining me in studio now is Jackie Corcoran. And Jackie, it's lovely to have you back again. And thanks for coming back to update us on what you told us you were embarking on in Tanzania. We think maybe the end of August, beginning of September, that kind then. of time. Yeah, yeah, I think it was around then. I had just taken up the full-time position. So, uh, yeah, so I, I started working uh, part-time back in, in March, but took it up full-time as uh, the communications and um, public relations manager with World Vision Ireland. So, Which is an international charity. It's an international charity that is a child-focused humanitarian and development aid charity. So, And yeah. if people were listening to you the last time, you've come from... Uh, being a radio producer, journalist. Yeah, I worked with RTE Radio 1 for uh, almost 20 years and then took a little uh, sidetrack and uh, went and worked in green politics for almost 10 years. I was uh, a communications manager with Grace O'Sullivan, the Green Party MEP, after working with her. Uh, it's sort of in the lead up to her being uh, elected to the Shannad or, you know, being uh, taking up her, her, her place as a, as a senator in the in the Shannon, and then when she uh, was elected to the European Parliament, I worked there with her for, um, for up until I took up this position with World Vision Ireland. And of course, we would have known one another through WhatsApp messages until now, and Absolutely. now we've met in person <laughs> twice, <laughs> yeah, which is lovely. So you went to Tanzania. Tell us about the purpose of it, and and what happened, what you saw, what you witnessed, Jackie. Well, it, I suppose there was there was kind of a number of. Uh, purposes to it if you like I was going there, it was my first trip to visit and see firsthand some of the projects that we're working on with uh, World Vision um, and an another part of what we were going there for I travelled with the CEO Gillian Barnett and another coll colleague um, managing a programme a particular um, area programme that we were working on <clears throat> that was coming to an end, that was, was closing uh, which was a good news story because it was a, an area programme project that that was closing uh, around, uh, it was focused on infant and maternity health and it was the setting up of a, a maternity facility uh, where mothers in the area were able to come to get uh, medical support around childbirth and it uh, has been operating for a number of years and we were stepping away from it and leaving it to the community to run that it had kind of reached and a point where And they had the resources be, you were happy run. to, to yeah. run. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's something that we're all about is trying to equip people with the resources and the, and the training and the knowledge and the infrastructure to be able to move forward independently um, with sustainable uh, projects. This one in particular was impacting, has been impacting on the number of um, maternal and child uh, deaths in the area. Now, you know, seeing it was a real eye opener. Travelling in to actually see it, you know, moving. Uh, we, I was based in Dodoma for most of the time that I was in Tanzania. This particular project and most of the projects that I went to see were around the Mundemu region, which is about an hour outside uh, Dodoma. And to get there, you're travelling through the city and then out into the outskirts and then you're going off road and you're going across roads and you're suddenly seeing this other side of Tanzania where it is it's very um, it's impoverished in, in, in parts I suppose is, is the only way to, to put it you're seeing a very bleak landscape you're seeing dry barren miles of, of lands uh, dusty lands around you that you're wondering how on earth could anything grow mm. and sustain and thrive and live in this sort of environment and so even just travelling into the area program was was quite an experience, um, but we got there and we went to visit the AIM Health Plus project, which was the, was the one that was coming to an end, and that was it was uh, it was a, it was great, but it was a very basic setup. You were talking about a room with with two beds in it. I've sent you a photograph you have, there. I'm, I'm looking at it um, here now. Yeah, and you know the, a woman uh, Phoebe Peter, who was the clinician in charge there showed us the setup and of course she was saying you know we do need more we want more we want mm. to build more but the community were, were coming on board and I met a number of women there with their children some women who had had previous experiences of childbirth in the area now you're still talking about hugely hugely challenging uh, circumstances where 
this is a huge improvement what was on, on what was there before, but you're talking about women who are coming in to give birth in labour, travelling on the back of uh, a, a truck if they're lucky, or they could be on the back of a motorbike, or they could be on on foot coming in to you know get the facilities, the um, backup that they need in this facility. There was another health facility in the re- in the uh, area um, further away, which was catering to a, a, a wider population that was again a step up that was more of a hospital. Setting. And how did World Vision get, you know, the help into the community so that it became, because people have been talking about this forever, yeah. haven't they? You, yeah. you, you need to be able to help people to yes. help themselves effectively. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, well, I suppose th- th- there's a number, from a number of channels, obviously from our public donations, and that's something that we rely hugely, hugely on. Um, we rely on the generosity of people to um, donate to World Vision Ireland or to sponsor children. One of our, our key kind of funding areas is, is through child sponsorship. On the visit, I met a couple of children who were the beneficiaries of that, children who were sponsored by World Vision Ireland supporters, so people in Ireland who were directly sponsoring uh, these children, committing to to giving a certain amount of money every month towards uh, these children. But, but that's not just about sponsoring a child. That's about the, the, uh, the family benefits that from that, a community benefits mm. from that. So it's about creating a space for the child to thrive in as well. And we also get a lot of funding from Irish aid. Uh, yeah, which and, is and government other, aid. Yeah. Other, um, you know, government or official uh, aid funding streams as but well. But you were able to stand back. World Vision was able to stand back from this project. So what this had stage, been yeah. do- done, what doctors appointed, trained nurses, yes. trained... Yes in the community so that it can yeah. could sustain this maternity clinic itself. Yeah. And you know that was one of a number of, of there were other examples of ongoing projects that that I went to as well and that it was hugely inspiring while it was it was emotionally challenging because you were seeing um, people living in situations that while they were improved they were still so completely different to how we're we're living so that's that's it's a culture shock, and yeah. but it's also hugely inspiring when you compare the likes of what's going on in um, East Africa, in the Horn of Africa, Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, where we're focusing a lot of our energies around campaigning and fundraising for the the, the hunger crisis that's impacting and that area. And why is Tanzania different? Well, I suppose for me, what was really interesting about it was to see you know on the one hand in my job i'm focusing on the on the on the hunger campaign focusing on the emergency where in in the horn of africa where that money is going into emergency relief, is going into providing food and direct aid to deal with the immediate emergency of people, children being on the brink of starvation in Tanzania. What I got to see were the long time po- long term positive benefits of what aid can do of what donations can do so and creative aid creative which leaves the you know, I described the, the maternity facility that was built in a spot where there was no no medical support prior to that for for women going none. into labor none. none i mean you know you're talking about being miles away from and in, and if in something goes wrong where you're you're traveling across dirt tracks that are yeah. like traveling across the mountains there're deep there's holes and and um, deeply kind of rutted, rutted roads and this was in the dry season that I was travelling so you know while it was challenging to get across in a rainy season you're talking about uh, uh, treacherous conditions to try and, and get in when there's rain and floods mm-hmm. and, and the roads become pretty much impassable or very challenging to get through so there was the likes of that, there was the likes of a community savings group that uh, that we went to, to visit which was just incredible it was this group of people coming together with you know we might look at it and say they, they have nothing but they, they had a, and every Friday they would come together have their meeting they would all contribute into this community fund that was there to improve things within the community again it, it was supported but it was also this self-sustaining model where one young woman to- spoke to me about her ambitions uh, to she, she's taken out a small loan and she wants to set up a, a small business for herself on a small sort of a sustainable business level we met another project we went to we went to a, a sort of a group a community project and then an individual uh, f- farming family um, ha- who had a small the farming family had a small holding are these the piggies? Uh, well, I shall tell you, I'll get to the piggies. Some, yeah. <laughs> because because I love, that, thanks. I think, was a, a real favourite for me. Um, but the, the, the conservation agriculture 
program and then an individual farmer showing showing this in in um, uh, in his day to day life and how he and his wife were were using these uh, uh, growing practices was really inspiring because it was about innovation and science and using science to grow in what looks like the most completely inhospitable and this is the picture, conditions. The most beautiful you picture. can see it and you can see food growing yes. against a, a really barren backdrop where you look at it and you think how is anything growing here mm. and it's flourishing because of these growing methods and drilling down and finding ways of course water is everything so it's finding ways to bring water and to use it in, in an innovative way that is going to individually um, water plants and let them thrive in this in this uh, you know inhospitable and you met lots of women I'm seeing pictures of lots of women and lots of and course, lots of and women and you just mentioned dresses. you mentioned the pigs there yeah. so that was another project that we visited and that was um, a piggery that had been set up uh, all women running this piggery so they uh, came together and with support bought, bought their core uh, um, batch of, of pigs males, females all very carefully um, thought out in terms of the genetic um, variety and material coming in there so that they could start breeding pigs and then from this core piggery area women uh, individually took uh, their share of the pigs to their own home uh, spaces and so I met one woman in particular who I just found really inspiring and her name was uh, is Judith Malugo Malugu and uh, Judith is a, a widow and mother of five children and she proudly showed me her nine pigs and proudly showed me her set up where she had managed to get the resources together with some help and support to put a solar panel on her roof to have a, a, a light shining outside her house which was like just this beacon of you know positivity that she was just thrilled to show me and uh, so look really fascinating and very very positive I'm looking at the houses as well they're mud, mud. Are they mud houses? Yeah, mud that bricks? particular, you see, you see a huge variety in housing and you see a huge variety in the sort of, um, I suppose, quality of the houses as well. Your, um, uh, that's uh, pictures you're looking at there are of uh, Judith's house. So the house, uh, it, the, the kitchen is separate to the house. So the smaller building that you're looking at mm -hmm. is her kitchen. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's very basic. It's a small uh, square, uh, yes, mud, mud, um, mud covered house house that has uh, a, an earthen floor, a little fire pit and a stool and that's her cooking facilities. But th these people um, really surviving fantastically well and creatively with relatively small amount of help coming from yes, outside. Yes, um, I mean the, the, the help is around helping to set up these projects and community supported projects and yes there is, is like the health centre, the, the, the more advanced health centre that I described obviously that's taken uh, you know a lot of funding to put that in in place mm. but then these these projects can become self-sustaining so uh, it, they are they're examples of what can be done and they're I suppose for people who are donating to the likes of World Vision or other NGOs doing that type of work I, for me it's really nice to be able to go back and say this is this what is we're doing happened, and it's yeah. not all about the doom and gloom and the, the bleakness of, of the, the stories we hear about developing world and crisis and emergency of course they're there of course it's vital that we keep funding and supporting those because this isn't about us and them this is about us being you know shared s shared uh, citizens of a shared planet that we all have a responsibility Absolutely. to help out and, and help and each and other they talk about climate uh, justice as well because these are the people who suffer from the hugely from so. the from the change in uh, in climate it's fascinating thanks so much for coming and bringing me the lovely pictures as well uh, Jackie and it's so interesting because it, it wasn't intended, but the first hour of the show today has actually all been about economics, macroeconomics, microeconomics, like the sort of economics that these people are, as you say, uh, working out for themselves in Tanzania. People can find out more? Yes, they absolutely where? can. Um, worldvision.ie is our website address, and there's lots of information there and on any of the social media, World Vision Ireland. Um, and if people want to donate, they'll find 
find details there or they can call us on 01498 and every bit of support that people can give us goes to okay. really really uh, good use listen we could talk for a long time uh, longer but um, Jackie thanks very much indeed and an extraordinary experience for you I'm sure but thanks for giving us a, a sense of it uh, Jackie Corcoran there of World Vision Ireland Talk